Hello and good morning. I hope your day is going well and that you are doing awesome. Thank you for giving me a little bit of your time to check out my February makeup bag picks. I have tried to film this video a couple of times and I it's it's so late because I've had a couple of oh shucks moments because some of the products that I chose have not been working for me. So this is kind of a I'm going to run you through what I'm using currently. I'm going to talk about the things that I realized have not worked in the last week, and then I'll still do my update at the end of the month, so that way you can kind of get an overall picture of what I'm panning and um, what I'm enjoying and moving out of my collection. So first off, let's talk to my shadows because um, a lot of what's going on for me this month is I have a lot of ideas that I want to get out that are perfect for Valentine's Day makeup. In particular, I just filmed this one um, focused around shopping my stash to mimic the Jeffree Star blood sugar palette, so I'll go on and link that in the card above. I also want to do another get ready with me because I was inspired by Neapolitan ice cream um, to show you how I'm painting my palette for that look, and so that one's going to be coming. And then I also wanted to go on and continue focusing on my rewind shade from Kat Von D. Me Vita Loca Remix, and so I'm kind of keeping that, um, um, what's it called, the shade Harpsichord Rewind look that I really, really enjoyed last month, so I'll go on and link that, get ready with me in the card above. So I'm kind of a little bit all over the place, and the reason I say that is because this look in particular, while I love it, um, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it after Valentine's Day once we get through all the hype of wearing pinks and reds and all that. So I kind of wanted a couple of backup plans in mind um, before I go into all the green looks for March and St. Patrick's Day and, and kind of stick with that theme for then. So that's a lot of background information that wasn't necessarily needed, but I just I kind of wanted to let you into my headspace a little bit to walk you through kind of how I'm treating my makeup right now. So in terms of palettes, the first one, of course, I'm going to go on and keep panning my Kat Von D. Maybe to look a remix palette. And like I mentioned, the shades that I'm really kind of focusing in on are going to be um, a Rewind, Vox, uh, Lyric. I'm kind of hoping to have Lyric finished by the end of March, maybe early April. So um, that means consistently using it for me right now. Today I have on Destroyer, Swoon, Love, Anthem, um, and in that other look that I was thinking about doing, the Neapolitan inspired ice cream look, um, which is a, a more subtle way if you want something sweet and feminine for Valentine's Day, I'll get that posted for you as well that'll still stay solidly within the Mavita Look a Remix palette, and I'll talk about some dupes that you can bring in from the rest of your collection. So, um, in addition to that, I also wanted to bring out my Z palette right here because there are some background shades or background backup shades that are perfect um, to get me constantly remembering them as I finish them out of the Kat Von D palette, but I also wanted this warm brown over here because Noble um, is not quite as warm as I want it to be for the Neapolitan look, so I thought this might be good. And then also, you know, like when I finish Anthem, I've got this Urban Decay Bittersweet Blush. I've also been using a lot of this Inglot Purple shade in my Outer V like I'm wearing today with the Rewind shade to kind of give that Jeffree Star inspired look. Um, and then also I was just looking through here Raw Power again when I finish Rewind because Rewind I, I think it's going to probably be the first shade I finish. I've been wearing it every single day um, since the beginning of the year in various forms, usually as a crease shade. I love it. Absolutely love it. So. Um, instantly have a backup so I can go on and finish the year still having a similar shade in my collection. So that's going to be where I'm thinking with that. And then um, let's kind of talk about some, let me talk about the two flops that I have first. Okay, in terms of shadow bases, I originally pulled out or well purchased, I, I've been using the MAC Paint Pot and Soft Ochre for months and months and months on end and I'm finally at the point where I just need a break for a slight, you know, little moment. Um, and so I purchased this Flower In Your Prime Ultimate Eye Primer from Walmart if you're wanting a cruelty-free option. But in comparison to the MAC Paint Pot, this is not up to snuff. Um, I've worn it consistently for the last week and my shadows are not vibrant. Um, they don't hold up as well during the day as they do with the MAC Paint Pot. So this was a bust for me. The, the consistency on this is quite thin and liquidy it's it's not like it's gone bad or anything it's just like it's a thinner formula than like the Lorac behind the scenes eye primer or um you know urban decay primer potion and whatnot so 
this just did not work but i did give it a concerted effort but i wanted an eye primer that definitely is going to stand up to these vibrant in your face shadows and this is not doing it for me so I haven't decided what i'm going to do with that if i'm going to pass along to a friend or if i can try to take it back to walmart so i went on and picked up the urban decay primer potion um it is what i'm wearing on my eyes today so i'll keep you posted um, for the rest of February how this does. I, I remember loving this years and years ago back when I first got into watching YouTube. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I'm not really a fan of the applicator on it with this wand situation. And it is a little bit of a thinner formula than I remember it being eons ago. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna go on and, and keep using it to see how I feel about it because today was the first time I used it again under this Valentine's Day look, kind of blood sugar palette inspired, so I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Then mascara wise, this was the other fail for me. I recently picked up the Maybelline Total Temptation Mascara in the, um, I'm, I'm assuming this is like the blackest black version. It was whatever the darkest version of that mascara is. This is not for me. I say this because I've worn it for the past week Every single time I wear it, within an hour, I have mascara all over my face, from my lower lash line, my eyes burn terribly with it. Um, when I wear it on my upper lash line, it bleeds into my eyeshadow. It's just, it's not for me. So that was a total fail. I gave it a week, and so I pulled out this um, sample that I had in my backup stash from Bobbi Brown. It's just the Smoky Eye Mascara. I've never used this before, so I figured now is the time to bring the sample out and see how I feel about it. So far, so good. I really feel like I have high expectations like with the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pop because my Holy Grail Mascara, I just got finished with the second tube with the Pure Cosmetics um, Fully Loaded Mag Magnetic Mascara. So it's really hard for other mascaras to compare to that because I'm used to that va-va-boom effect and and just the lengthening and the and the volumizing and so maybe i need to just get in the groove of switching mascaras on a regular basis again but either way like this didn't work we're going to try this out so far i'm feeling pretty good about this mascara but i don't know if it's going to flake and you know cause a hot mess all over my eyes but this was definitely a no-go okay then in terms of base products I have two primers that I'm going to be working through this month. I have the what's left of the L'Oreal Magic Lumi Light Infusing Primer because there's not much left in this container. I could probably finish it by the end of February if I really just dedicate the time to it. And I'm also getting down to the last pumps of the It Cosmetics Feel the Moment Skin Rejuvenating Hydrating Primer Serum. Um, it, not a lot comes out, so I actually have to take the lid off and then just pour a slight little bit onto the back of my hand to mix with my foundation. So we're going to move these out of my collection and enjoy them. And in terms of foundation, I have been wearing this for the last week. I picked up the Clinique Even Better Glow Light Reflecting Makeup in the shade Alabaster. So far, so good. I am enjoying it. It is what I'm wearing on my face today. There is a slight oxidizing effect. Um, within about 15 minutes of wearing the foundation, but so far so good. I'm happy with the coverage on it and it does hold up pretty well without breaking down during the day. I do notice like if I put on my makeup at about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning by about 5, I start seeing a little bit of separation around my nose area and then the typical, you know, wear and tear foundation a little bit around my chin and, you know, a little bit up on my forehead, but it's not so terrible that you feel like you'd have to completely redo your makeup like I feel like I can touch it up and be good so that's what I'm wearing for face products and then for powder um, I wanted a different powder situation from using that loose cap on D locket setting powder so I pulled out this MAC mineralized skin finish and light for my collection because I've had this in seasonal project pans in the past to the point where I've worn the dome off so I want to see within um, February if I can hit pan in this because it has been in my collection for a long time and it would just be really awesome to have yet another item to put in that back to MAC bag because I'm letting it pile up and pile up and pile up before I ever go and like redeem it for lipstick or eyeshadow because I'm trying not to bring a ton of makeup back into my collection so that MAC bag is getting pretty full now so we'll see what I can do with it. Blush, I have two that I wanted to pull out. This is the one I'm going to mainly be focusing on, my Clinique um, a Colourpop Cheek Popper. This is an amazing blush. I love it. I cannot get enough of it. But in that Neapolitan eye look that I want to do for an alternative Valentine's Day makeup, it's a little too much. 
um, with the pinks and things that I've got going on in there. So I also pulled out this blush that I bought because of Paige Thrifty Beauty because she loved it so much. It is the NYX Ombre Blush in the shade Mauve Me. This is so pretty. And I miss my Tarte Blushing Bride so badly. I love that blush, but I thought it might be kind of fun to try something at a drugstore point. So this is the blush I'm going to use for that Neapolitan look and um, throughout the year when I want more of a mauve look to my cheek. And then um, let's talk about some, I'm not really doing anything different. I'm still like for my lower lash line, I'm going to be panning my um, Maybelline Lasting Drama Waterproof Gel Pencil in the shade Polished Amethyst along with Anthem on my lower lash line because I really love that with pretty much the majority of looks I've come up with. So I'm just going to continue working on that, move this pencil out. Um, I've also got my NYX white eyeliner, and when I finish this, I'm going to move straight into my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk. I actually have the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil on in my um, inner corner with the Love Shade stamped over it, so either way, I'm going to work through both of those pencils. And then um, I'm still working on my MAC NC15 NW20 Studio Chromographic Pencil for my waterline. It takes eons to get through this thing, because literally, I never have to sharpen it except for sanitary purposes. For brows, because I finished my brow pencil last month, I went on and purchased the Maybelline Total Temptation Brow Definer in Soft Brown. This is a thicker pencil than the micro brow pencils I've used since January, so I'm curious to see how long it's gonna take me, but so far, so good. Um, it is a much warmer brown than, say, the NYX Micro Brow in Ash Brown that I love or the Anastasia Brow Wiz in Medium Brown, so it's taken a little bit of getting used to, but so far, so good. I do like this, and it holds up fairly well throughout the day. And then lip products. I have a couple um, that I'm going to be working on. The first off for this red lip, I am working on panning my MAC lip liner in the shade Cherry. As you can see, there's a lot of product there, so it's not like I'm going to finish it by the end of the month, but I'm going to see what I can do. And then I need to evaluate whether or not to keep this lipstick or go on and toss it in the back to MAC bag, but it's one of those old limited edition matte formulas and damn glamorous. I have used quite a bit of it, but it's at the point where it has a little bit of a smell to it. So at the end of February, I'm going to make that determination whether or not it's time to keep it or toss it. But so far, so good. I am enjoying loving the color. But after Valentine's Day, I probably am going to go back to kind of reaching into more of the neutral kind of lip colors because we'll be done with all the Valentine's festivities. So in that case, I'm also keeping in my um, MAC World Lip Liner. Where is that tiny nub of a pencil? I'm almost at the point where it's disappearing into the lid, so I'm going to see what I can do with it and see if I can, you know, get a couple more days usage out of this. I know it'll be gone by the end of February. And then I also want to see if I can finish um, this Bite a Mousse Bouche lipstick in the shade Chai by the end of February because there's not a lot of product in there. And if I apply my lipstick once or twice a day, I should probably be able to get through this. So there we go. And then I'm also still working on my um, Too Faced sample of the Chocolate Soleil bronzer. I'm really just, I'm still not liking the fragrance intensity of this, but I noticed that when the packaging is smaller, it's a little bit more tolerable for me to get through. And I do enjoy the color of this on my skin. So I'm going to continue working on this and move it out of my collection. And then setting spray. I really wanted to mention this because it is definitely worth checking out. I recently applied on Octoly's website for this Ofra Makeup Fixer in the Light Mist. Look at the size of this bottle. It's huge. You get eight full fluid ounces of setting spray, whereas a typical setting spray, you get about three and a half to maybe four ounces. So definitely in value this is worth looking into there is no scent on this setting spray so you don't have to worry about feeling perfumed and and suffocated and gross and the mist on it is is light enough where you can feel the setting spray definitely going onto your face but it's not intense where you feel like you have to kind of you know inch back a little bit or you feel like you're getting blasted where your mascara is going to start running or your eyeliner is going to smudge this is great stuff. Um, it does have a bubblegum color inside of the bottle, which is kind of fun because it actually leaked a little bit when I first got it. But other than that, I've been really pleased 
um, with using this over the last couple of days. And as you can see, with eight fluid ounces, it's going to take quite a while to get through this bottle. So I, I'm really flattered that Octoly sent this to me to review. Um, but definitely, if you're in the market for a setting spray, this is worth checking out. So I will go on and link all that Octoly information in the description box below so you can check out ingredients, you can check out price points, you can check out if it's something that might work well into um, integrating into your makeup routine. So, whew, that's about it. <laughs> Like I said, it's it's been a crazy month because I'm kind of going in all sorts of different directions with my makeup. I'm, you know, f swapping makeup out um, on a daily basis because, like, I'm wearing this pink look because I, I want to um, put some effort into Swoon and Destroyer. And I'm definitely going to be going back to something similar to this later on in the year. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that um, I'm giving some other options to other shadows in my collection. So be on the lookout. I will be posting that Neapolitan Ice Cream Inspired Valentine's Day makeup coming soon and the next week's going to be paying that palette update <laughs> So pretty exciting. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day Thank you once again for giving me a little bit of your time and I look forward to catching up with you soon. See you later <laughs>